Well, despite market expectations for tapering of the U.S. Fed's monetary stimulus next month and the consequent dive of equity markets in emerging Asia, most people stick to their optimism about the region's long-term economic outlook. Now, one of them is the president of the Asian Development Bank, Takahiko Nakao. Now, during a visit to Beijing, he told our reporter Martina Fuchs that he doesn't see a major threat to macro stability in the APAC region and that inflation should also be kept in check. In its latest uh, Asian development outlook, the ADB trimmed its growth forecast for the region to 6.3% in 2013 and 6.4% in 2014, which are the downside growth risks that you are seeing for the Asia-Pacific this year. Yeah, there are many discussions uh, ongoing uh, about the uh, impact from uh, the uh, QE's uh, uh, ending uh, by the uh, Fed. and. Uh, uh, slower growth, uh, uh, more uh, difficulties in European countries, but I don't think uh, there is a major shock to the Asian economy. And uh, I'd like to stress again that uh, after the Lehman crisis, uh, although there have been some adjustment uh, to the Asian economy, we have uh, kept uh, rather robust growth. Mm -hmm. And especially I should, uh, I want to point out the strength of uh, ASEAN countries, for instance. They uh, uh, keep uh, 5 point something growth rate uh, last year, this year and next year. Talking about inflation in Asia, it is expected that consumer prices will tick up uh, from 4% this year to 4.2% in 2014. At least this is according to the Asian Development Outlook by the ADB. What can be done, in your opinion, to control price pressures? Overall, of course, uh, it depends on the commodity prices and so on. But uh, because of uh, very prudent monetary policies and so on, I think uh, the Asian inflation uh, situation is uh, much uh, more uh, subdued uh, than uh, uh, before. Uh, so in some countries, uh, they should uh, still follow very prudent monetary policies. But overall, uh, it can be okay. ADB counts 67 members, 48 are within the Asia-Pacific region and 19 outside. Which of those are currently getting most of ADB's financing and why? We have uh, about 40 member countries which are growing and are getting grant from uh, 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 ADB. Mm -hmm. Among uh, member countries, uh, uh, the India and the China uh, have been uh, the uh, biggest uh, growers from ADB. So, uh, uh, non-regional members, 19 regional members and uh, three uh, developed economies in the region which are again uh, Australia, New Zealand, Japan. They are just uh, donating uh, the uh, capital and grant uh, contribution to ADP. But they are very important members because uh, of course uh, they are financing the important work of us but also they can put uh, I mean non-regional members like uh, European countries and uh, uh, the United States and Canada they can uh, provide us important uh, financing, but at the same time, uh, they can provide uh, certain ideas, thinking about the development. So those are also very important members of us. In China, ADB's operations have been focusing on road projects, loans to SMEs, poverty eradication, and water management. What are your priority areas going forward? Our focus will be more about uh, uh, the environment and the uh, water management and uh, uh, the uh, technical assistance for those areas also. Already our focus is uh, uh, basically on the uh, poorer uh, uh, part of uh, China, including south and uh, uh, northeast and so on, not the coastal areas.